God may be giving you more to work with than what you are working with at this time. That's why I don't like to hang with low-thinking people because they'll make you underutilize what God has given you. You need somebody to challenge you that you could be doing more than what you're doing right now. You could have more than you have right now. You could go further than you're going right now. And somebody's got to be bold enough to look you in the face and empower you to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you. Now listen to me, I don't care if you're sick, I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as you're waking up, you're still in the game. You can still make it happen. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, boo, you're still in the game. You still can win. Now get your butt up. I want to encourage somebody out there who's thinking about quitting and giving up. Somebody who has been praying for years for things to turn around. You're thinking about quitting, you're thinking about giving up, you are caving in. This is for you. Pick up your damn suffering and bear it and try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. That's what life is like. It's suffering. I'm in a fight for my life. I'm in a fight to be a man. I'm in a fight to be a father. I'm in a fight to be a mama. Something in me wants to quit it and walk away. I'm in a fight. Give me somebody in here. Have you ever just had one of those days when your parachute doesn't open the race has started but your gate won't unlock you can't keep it in the fairway you just can't keep up you can't keep your head above water it's just one of those days strive to become the kind of person that people of quality and substance would want to be associated with become a person of skillful language well read and well disciplined positive attitude a person of culture and intelligence. You will be uniquely rewarded by this reputation, drawing exciting people to you. Remember, to attract valuable people, you must be attractive. Association is truly one of the seven fundamentals to your future wealth and happiness. It has such a major effect on how your life works out. You got to go through some things in order for you to get faith. You've got to have some life experiences under your belt so you can talk about how strong your faith is. Because if your faith has never been tested, you can't brag on how strong it is. And if you're not careful, you will allow situations in this life to cloud your perspective. And you will allow moments in this life to take away the hopes and the dreams of tomorrow. Failure, it's not final, it's formative, it's part of the journey. How are you gonna learn if you don't ever fail? Failure is fuel for your future. Failure is a part of your story. The only time you fail is the last time you try. You need to get the right perspective on it because this failure, it will not end in death, but this failure is a part of you being formed. Quit school, quit jobs, quit life, quit friends. Oh, what an urge it is to quit. Don't give up. Stay in it. Stay focused. Sometimes when you enter into a storm, health storms, financial storms, there are all kinds of storms. I'm talking about storms that other people can't see. Storms that make people think you haven't been through anything. Because you get up out of bed every morning and you put your hair up and, and they don't know you put your smile on just like you did your makeup. And, and walked in smiling because you were going through a secret storm. Has anybody ever gone through a secret storm? What you want is a powerful motivator, but the reason why you want it is an even more powerful motivator. It has greater pull. You may find that some of your goals you thought at first glance were important are not important after all. Do some reflecting, refining, and revising the joy is not in the success the joy is in trying the joy is in the process that I'm gonna keep working I'm gonna keep going at it see failure is forming my future failure is just another peg in the ladder for me to go higher I don't want to just know how to make it work I want to know why it doesn't work and the only way I can find that out is I gotta fall on my face but guess what the righteous man falls seven times but he gets back up 
And you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck. These people are bad for your health. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. See, there are some people that aren't good for you. So you got to look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship. Birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. You're doing the best you can, but you put one foot forward and two steps are made back. You're trying, but things don't seem to be quite working out the way you play. You thought you'd be in a different place at this season in your life. You're doing everything right, but you're still suffering. The way you enjoy life best is to wrap up one goal and start right on the next one. Don't linger too long at the table of success. The only way to enjoy another meal is to get hungry. Another thing to check for on your list is that you have included goals for each of these three important categories. First, make certain your list includes material items you want such as a home, furniture, a car, or jewelry. Don't attach the wrong importance to things, but they are important. Make sure you've listed your economic goals, your goals for income, profits, and productivity. Third, you'll want to include on your list goals for personal development. Your goals to be more physically fit, to lose weight, to be a more effective leader, to be more decisive, to be a better communicator, to learn another language. Of course, there are other types of goals to consider, social goals, family goals, lifestyle goals. This is pretty heavy homework, but remember, whether or not you do your homework shows up in the marketplace as well as in the classroom. There's nothing in this world that can defeat us if God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? It is impossible to have victory and think bondage. It's impossible to be happy and think sadness and depression. When I'm discouraged, I need somebody to come alongside me to encourage me that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That kind of talk wakes up my faith. It stirs my faith to know that no matter how dark my situation, God can work it out. Most of y'all are able to say you don't like your friends. You don't trust them. They tell all of your deep, dark secrets. So why are they still there? Because you go to sleep at night doesn't mean that you're resting. See, I realized if your life and the people that you have in your life creates nightmares for your life, what makes you think that because you're going to sleep that your mind is going to stop? The nightmares that you're having while you're awake, you're witnessing nightmares. Drama, dysfunction, negative people, you consuming your life. It's like, oh, there's negative dysfunction and drama. You're going to walk into the direction of dysfunction and nightmares. I'm encouraging you to be mindful and be deliberate of what you let in your mind. Be concerned about what's going on and do the things necessary that keeps you out of harm's way. But don't be consumed with it. So make up your mind to watch something that inspire you, that lift you up as you rethink your life in self-examination. It's essential to set aside some time every week to review all of your goals, redo them, restructure them, to add goals, or to tear up the whole list and start over. Goal setting is not something you do just once. It's a continual process. Also, you must constantly check your progress toward your goals. You don't want to fall too far behind on, or worse, lose sight of, your important goals. Now, just as important as your long-range goals are your short-range goals. Your goals for tomorrow, next week, next month, these are goals you can accomplish within the next year, the immediate future. We call these goals confidence builders. When you work hard, burn the midnight oil, and accomplish these little things, it builds your confidence to go for your long-range goals. Write down in your notebook or journal 
all the little things you would like to have or accomplish in the next year. How you set up this list is up to you. You might want to break it down by week or by month. Set it up in whatever way works well for you. Part of the fun of having a list is being able to check off something as obtained or completed. Every week, try to check off at least one thing on your list of short-term goals. And when you are able to check off something major, something on your list of long-range goals, celebrate. Congratulate yourself. Make winning joyful. It is very important to celebrate progress. We grow from two experiences. One is the joy of winning, and the other is the pain of losing. Here's what that also means. Make losing painful. Put it on yourself. If you set something up, fooled around, didn't pull it off, put it on yourself. And get around people who will help in this area. Hey, don't join an easy crowd. Go where the expectations are high, where the pressure to perform is high. It's how we grow. Somebody needs to know today you're going to make it. Somebody needs to know today you're doing all right. You may not be what you ought to be, but you're not what you used to be. And you're going to get there by God's grace. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. And don't you keep putting yourself down. You're doing better than you think you are. You lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. Most people are living their lives from a heart place and not a head place. They are so engrossed with what the heart feels that they have not covered what the head thinks. Most people are governed by their emotions. We all need associations with people of substance to provide influence concerning major issues, society, money, love, culture, friendship, taste, enterprise, family, opportunity, community. Behavior is mostly influenced by ideas and ideas are mostly influenced by education and education is mostly influenced by the people with whom we associate so don't join an easy crowd make sure you get around people who can ask the right questions about the latest ideas you've discovered about your philosophy your enterprise your goals your lifestyle go where the demands are high where the spotlight is on to grow where the expectations are high to produce and to become more than you currently are. This is the time to look at the relationships in your life and ask the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Is it an asset to me or a liability? Everybody has something that strikes terror in them to do it. Whatever you got hurt at, Whatever you got damaged in is the thing that you struggle to do. Those strong holes come against you every time you try to move outside of your little prison. And people think you are angry, but the anger is the fruit. The root is the fear. Most angry people are scared. Pull it by the roots. Strong holes. Casting down imaginations. Envisioning self-destruction, the enemy terrorizing you with what he might do. That storm that you're in, it seems like that storm is enveloping the whole world. Hard to see out of that storm. It's hard to see past it. It seems like the storm is everything. You can get out of the storm and you will get out of the storm. But right now, you're being tried. You're being tested by fire and by pain. Don't fail the test. Measurable progress and having someone to monitor that progress. I will never forget my first list of goals that I put together. My list contained only four or five items. When I showed it to him, he said, is this your list? I said, yes. Then he started asking those very wise questions. How about your health goals? I didn't have any of those on my list. He asked, 
How about your investment goals? Those were lacking. Your family goals. How about your travel goals? How about your goals for gifts and sharing? What would you like to become? Who would you like to meet? What skills would you like to develop? Did you ever want to write a book, a poem? Would you like to be a sophisticated person of power and influence and culture? Would you like to be debt free? How about education for your children? How about a splendid library stocked with the best of books? Would you like to see New York, visit Paris, explore Rome? Would you like to make some new friends? Did you ever want to parachute out of an airplane? Do you need a ranch someday, a cabin in the mountains? Is there something you'd like to prove, a mark you'd like to make? I've resolved in my spirit that every experience is my education. So the good experiences and the bad experiences, I'm going to learn from that and I'm going to discover the opportunity for me to grow and for me to get better. I'm telling you, I've already made up my mind that I know I will fall down. I know that I will stumble, but I already see myself getting back up. Therefore, I'm never down. I'm either up or getting back up. I'm going to learn. How much do you love yourself? You don't trust them. So why are they still there? So if you get rid of these things, people, and situations now, you get rid of the nightmares now, they're not going to have anything new to spread about you. You're in the new season of your life. I want you to win. I want you to get to the next level. You need to change your mind because some of you are thinking about giving up because you're in a season of failure. But just because you failed doesn't mean that God doesn't have a bright future in store for you. It is always too soon to quit. Remember, major keys to your better future are going to be ideas and information. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. If you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need. If you want to know how to change your life, I give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of things you should do, you should follow through on? I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should get into the office earlier. People love to have their should lists be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions to kind of know it's not going to happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way, or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard, they make it a must, they find a way to make things work. Because somewhere when we make this click, when we make something a must, we attach ourselves to it. It becomes part of our identity. Whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing. Not your goals, not your desires, but your standards. If you identify yourself in a new way and you own that every day, and that becomes the standard of how you live, you'll find the way to make that standard real. It all comes down to the inner game, my friends. Changing your life is a change in the inner game. The outside world you can't control, but you have absolute control over this one if you learn the dynamics of what shapes you. Instead of your goals to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm going to transform my body. I'm going to take on a new challenge. I'm going to find some technique or strategy. There's a million of them. 
that can reframe myself where I want to feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work, because it's tough out there and I want to be stronger than I've ever been before. Don't let this year be like last. And if last year was great, still don't let it be that way. Raise the standard. If your life is perfect and extraordinary, you darn well know you're not going to be happy unless you keep making it better. It's not what we get that makes us happy, it's who we become. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Age excusitis is a failure disease of never being the right age to succeed. It comes in two forms. I'm too old or I'm too young. How many times have you heard someone say, I'm too old to start a new career now or I'm too young for all that responsibility? In fact, how often have you heard yourself say it? This excuse has closed the door of real opportunity to thousands of people. They think their age is somehow wrong, so they don't even bother to try. And unfortunately, we live in a society that seems all too ready to reinforce those stereotypes. On any night on TV, you can see old people put out to pasture and young people biting off more than they can chew. The statistics we read in the paper continually tell us how hard it is to find a job when you're 60 or when you're 19. But the fact is, for every statistic and every dramatization of these so-called problem ages, you can find real life exceptions to the rules. Ronald Reagan was elected president just prior to his 70th birthday. Harlan Sanders was collecting Social Security checks when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken. Satchel Paige was playing professional baseball well into his 50s, but he didn't talk about his age. On the other end of the age spectrum, Apple Computer was started by two young men in their 20s, and the founder of Federal Express thought up the idea for his express mail service when he was in college. So age is no barrier. It is just an excuse. If you think you're too old to change or too young to accept the challenge, here's a cure. Look at your present age positively. Think, I'm still young instead of, I'm too old. Remember, you're capable of handling any responsibility you believe you can handle. Second, keep this computation in mind. Most people can expect about 50 years of productive working life, from about age 20 to about age 70. If you're 30, you've still got 80% of that productive life ahead of you. If you're 40, you've still got a big 60% of your working life to go. If you're 50, you've still got 40%, at least 20 years of productivity, and that's plenty of time to succeed. Finally, invest your future time in doing what you really want to do. It's only too late when you let your mind become negative and tell you it's too late. Stop thinking, I should have started years ago, because that's failure thinking. Instead, think, I'm going to start now. My best years are ahead of me. That's the way success people think I don't know if I can do this job I mean this is this is really out of my league I'm not a genius you know I think the most insidious of all the excuse diseases is intelligence excusitis it's the feeling that I'm not quite smart enough or other people know something I don't unlike the other maladies we've discussed people tend to suffer this one in silence nobody wants to talk about how dumb they feel but they feel it deep down inside and it blocks their road to success most of us you see make two basic errors with respect to intelligence. One, we vastly underestimate our own brain power, and two, we vastly overestimate the intelligence of other people. Because of these two mistakes, we sell ourselves short, and we fail to take advantage of many opportunities. Some years ago, Dr. Edward Teller, the famous physicist who's called the father of the atomic bomb, was asked what a young person needed to know to become a successful scientist. Teller said, 
And I quote, A child does not need a lightning fast mind to be a scientist, nor does he need a miraculous memory, nor is it necessary that he gets very high grades in school. The only point that counts is that the child have a high degree of interest in science. Interest and enthusiasm are the critical factors, not intelligence. Another way of putting it is simply to say, it's not how much intelligence you have that counts, it's how you use the intelligence you have. Let me give you another example. I was at a college class reunion a while back, and I met a fellow I hadn't seen for about 25 years. His name was Chuck. He was one of the brightest people I've ever met, and he graduated with honors. The last time I talked to him, he had a goal of someday owning his own business. So when I saw him at the reunion, I asked him, how's your business going? Well, David, to tell you the truth, I never really went into business for myself. You know what I did? I used my college education to become an expert in why my business ideas wouldn't work out. Yeah, I learned uh, all the pitfalls of businesses, all the reasons why you might fail. And, uh, you know, you have to have, be sure you have plenty of capital, the business cycle is right, you have to make sure there's enough demand for your product, the local industry is stabilized, there's a thousand and one things to check out. So here I am today, I'm still auditing freight shipments and just plodding along, working for somebody else, and it's not really doing me a lot of good. And I see friends of mine from high school who went out right after high school and they're doing successful business straight from high school. There's got to be a reason for that. Do you see Chuck's dilemma? The thinking that guided his intelligence was far more significant than the amount of intelligence he has. If you study the world around you, you'll find a lot of highly successful people with very average IQs. And you'll also find a lot of failures who are brilliant. The difference is one of attitude. What are these people using their brain power for? To defeat themselves or to find ways to succeed? There's one more point I want to make before we summarize the cures for this disease of intelligence excusitis. Another common mistake that people make with regard to intelligence is to equate piles of facts with useful brain power. But it's far more important to use those brain cells for thinking and analyzing than it is for memorizing. Someone once asked Albert Einstein, how many feet are there in a mile? Einstein replied, I don't know. Why should I fill my head with facts that I can find in two minutes in any reference book? I Einstein, as usual, was right. You can always find facts. You can't always find good, positive thinking. That you've got to learn for yourself. So here's a cure for intelligence excusitis. So that brings me to the final step, that it's necessary for us to begin to look at the future and know that it's possible that we can have our dream. Yes, it is. Other people have done it, then we can do it. We fail a lot of times. Well, a lot of other folks fail, and eventually they came back and they succeeded. So it's possible we can have what we want. And we know that we want to get it. It's necessary that we align ourselves with people that think like we do. It's necessary we get negative, do-nothing people out of our lives. It's necessary we never stop learning and growing and developing ourselves. It's necessary that we never give up. We know that it's you, it's me. It's being responsible for our stuff and deciding that we're going to keep on keeping on, that we're going to find a way to win or find a way to make it happen. And we know it's hard. It's not going to be a picnic. Yes, it's hard. It's hard. And we will do it hard. And once it's, we do it hard and we go through it, we realize it was worth it. And once you discover it was worth it, it is done. It's done. It's done, ladies and gentlemen, before it happens. Well, here's what I'm suggesting to you. That when you're working, you have a wall to break through. Let's say a friend of mine who walks, he runs a marathon, and he says, when he's running the 26-mile marathon, he said, let's say that hypothetically, that 18th mile is the wall. He said, Les, when you get there and you're running, he says, everything in you is telling you to stop, to give up. Every muscle is aching. And you're saying to yourself, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you just keep on and you keep on and you keep on. It seems like you're moving at slow motion. And then eventually when you break through that 18 mile wall, then you know it's like done and you're on automatic and you glide on in and you know it's there. You know you're going to get to the finish line. And we've all had experiences where we were working on something and we knew it was possible. And we did those things that were necessary to bring it into reality. We took the responsibility to make it happen. Other people couldn't see it. A lot of people didn't believe it. You were attacked. You were criticized. People were opposing you, but you kept on doing it. It was hard. It was rough. It was difficult. But to you, it was worth it. And eventually you got to a level you know, can nothing stop me now. I'm on the move.
I'm on the move. I recommended the last time I was here the little book Richest Man in Babylon, and I said I've lectured now to over three million people in the last 33 years, and I've recommended this little book to almost all of them. I think. Guess how many have actually gone and got this little book? Answer: Very few. My best guess is 10 percent. Such an easy thing to do. In that last seminar, right, I suggested this little book, number one, is easy to find. Number two, it's easy to buy. The most you can pay for it, six, seven, eight dollars. You can borrow that from your kids. And number three, it's easy to read. It's in story form. That's why I use it for teenagers, teaching them how to be rich by 40, 35, if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. But if it's easy to find and easy to buy, and if it's easy to read, why wouldn't everybody go get it? We don't know. What do you know? You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Here's how profound it is. Some do and some don't. Now here's the numbers. About 10% do. 90% don't or won't. We don't know the mystery of that. And I'm telling you, 10 years from now, those numbers will still be the same. 10% will, 90% won't. The numbers don't change. Only the faces change. You're looking at one of the faces. I used to belong to the 90% who couldn't be bothered even if it was easy. Guess how many people have a library card? Wisdom of the world available. Transform your life in any value amount you want. By the way, how much is a library card in Texas? Free. Here's what free is. Easy. I mean, it can't be any easier than free. Somebody says, "Well, would you bring it by?" Well, no. At least you got to go get it. No. Wisdom of the world available. Transform your life spiritually, socially, personally, economically, and every other way. Teach you how to be rich and powerful and sophisticated and healthy, influential. How many people have a library card? Answer: three percent. Ninety-five, ninety-seven percent couldn't be bothered. Guy specializes in happy hour, but he doesn't have a card. And now readily and quickly blames the government, blames his company, and blames policy, and blames the pay scale. When if he only knew, if he joined the three percent. Here's my advice to you today: walk away from the ninety-seven percent. Don't talk like they talk. Don't act like they act. Don't go where they go. Don't specialize in what they specialize in. Throw away the blame list they cling to. Start you a new life. You say, well, is it as simple as getting a library card and join the three percent? And the answer is, of course, of course. That's how easy this stuff is. This is so easy. It's so simple. It's not complex. You don't need a 2,000-year-old guru. You don't need multi-track affirmations. I'm telling you, you don't. Affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Don't let somebody sweep you into some contrary way to nature itself. Says unless you labor, the miracle of the seed and the soil and the seasons and God and all the other stuff that's available, sunshine and rain, that's not available to you by affirmation. It is only available to you by labor. So labor well. Learn well, discipline yourself well. You can have all the treasures you want. This stuff's easy and simple. It's not ocean waves and seagull. You don't have to move to Sedona, where all the force fields come together in Arizona. <laughs> well, when you make the decision to be successful, like I said earlier, you have to expect there's going to be trouble. Life. Okay, how, how can I say this to you? Listen to me. Life is ten percent. Life is ten percent what happens to you. It's ninety percent what you do about it. See, life is going to happen to all of you. I don't care who you are. You're going to lose a loved one. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be told no. You're going to fall. You are going to fail many times to become successful. It is a part of success. It is the process. You have to fail in order to be successful. That's the way it works. There's no other way. Listen to me. For thirty years, I made a lot of money telling jokes. I write jokes. Me, I don't care what you say. When I want to be funny, that is my God-given gift. I can be funny. But listen to this, though. I done wrote a lot of jokes that wasn't funny. I have written, I have written some stuff that I thought was hysterical in my house. I was writing. I went, boy, when they hear this, they're gonna be screaming. Yes. Went out on stage that night, did the joke, nothing. I mean nothing. I, I have written more jokes that did not work than actually worked. I have failed far more times than I have ever succeeded. Okay, see, let me show you. Okay, check this out. Okay, listen, Michael Jordan, who is like really the greatest basketball player of all time, right? Michael Jordan has taken 
985 game-winning shots. That means before the buzzer, Jordan has raised up 985 times to try to win the game. Michael Jordan has only made 145 of them. He has shot the ball 980 some times to try to win the game. Michael Jordan has only made 140 game winning shots. You don't care nothing about the failure. You don't know nothing about the 800 times he missed. But oh, you cheer and clap for the 145 that went in. You see, that is how it works, man. That is the magic of how it works. They're only going to write about the victories. They only laugh at the jokes I write that's funny. You don't even know the jokes I wrote that didn't work because I stopped telling them. But you laugh at it. the movies and the YouTube clips. And, you know, God has made me famous and I don't even know. I don't even know how. I just dreamed of one day becoming globally. You know what? Uh, let me tell you. I asked God to uh, about 10 years ago, I told God I wanted him to increase my global brand and persona. I wanted to be more global. I didn't want to just stay in the United States. I wanted to go see the world. I wanted people around the world to know of me. So God began to change me. So he said, you will have to be more than just funny in order for this to happen. So did, I did not know that my motivational tapes the things, I've, the stories I've told about my life would go on a platform called YouTube. Because 10 years ago, what was YouTube? I didn't know. I just started telling my story and they started putting it on YouTube and Facebook and people started finding out more of who I was. So when I was asking God to increase my global brand and persona, I had no idea how he was going to really do it. Until 2015, they hired me to become the host of the Miss Universe pageant. That was, that was, God. And by the way, I'm getting better and better and better at my craft. The larger numbers I run, the more I get more, more proficient at my message, the more I learn to close better. You with me on that? All right, so let's, let's get to some keys and then I'll show you some stuff. Oh, you know what, before I do that, I need to convince you, some of you, Sam said, hey, not everybody there knows you. That's totally cool. This is a new market for me. All the stuff I sell is free. I just want to, I spent the first 45 years of my life being blessed by great mentors, great guidance, great information. I decided I'm going to spend the last 45 years of my life, the second 45, helping other people build their dream. How many of you have a big dream you want to make come true in your life? Something special you want to do? Okay. Me too, and I got bigger ones. Let me tell you what everybody's dream is, put in your note. I don't care if you sell pest control, security, solar, insurance, I don't care what it is. Guess what they want? You ready? And guess what you want? You want to be happier. You got to link everything to people's happiness. You think that's incorrect. That's ridiculous. So I'm going to kill some termites they are going to be happier. Yep. They think if you did pest control, at the end of the day, the greatest influencers get that people want to be happier. At the, at all of you want to be happier. You think if I become a millionaire, I'll be happier. If I get that baller jet, I'll be happier. If I'm making 100 grand, I'll be happier. If I lose 30 pounds, I'll be happier. If I protect my family with security, my family will be happier. People want to be happier. You think, well, maybe that applies to other businesses, but not mine. Really? You already aren't coaching. Listen to someone who's built some of the largest sales organizations. I built sales organization, medical, financial. I built them in the retail space. I understand building teams. I understand persuasion. Everything is linked to people's happiness. You know why NBA players play in basketball? They think if they make more money, take care of the mama, win some NBA championships, everybody will be happier. Every human does something to be happier. There's this dude who sold more hamburgers than anybody in the world. What's his name? Anybody know? Ray Kroc. He's also, his organization, most people don't know this, but the largest holder of acreage real estate on earth. He owns the most real estate in the world selling hamburgers. Guess what? He didn't sell hamburgers because his hamburgers suck. You know what he sold? Happiness. Happiness. He got creative. What does a hamburger have to do with being happy? Absolutely nothing, except he created an environment where people wanted more hamburgers. People want to get recruited into teams to be happier. They think it's making money, but the making, that's the symptom. The disease is they want to be happier. If you keep selling money all the time to people, 
just money, you're not going to have a very good team. But if you sell happiness, recognition, travel, success, income, all those things, that's what people want. What people want in every area of life is to be happier. You know what Ray Kroc's mascot is for hamburgers? A clown. A clown. You know what his number one selling meal is called? The what? Happy meal. Turns out I'm right, huh? Turns out I'm right. This dummy knows a little bit about selling. A little bit about influence. All these dudes you see in here that are hardcore with their hats on, these stud dudes in here, they want to be happier. You know what I know? When I was 21 years old and I started in this business, I wanted to be happier. You know what I want right now? I want to be happier. You know what I want in 20 years? To be happier. You know what I want for my family? Them to be happier. And I will buy products and join organizations that make me think I can be.